Before we begin, yes, <laughs> your special request. Alarm you because I had those miserable red marks all over my face. Um, I used the grace jar as an opportunity to thank God that the accident that I had was not worse than it was. And I chose not to give you details of it because I did not want to worry you, but in fact, it seems I yes. concerned you more yes. by not doing that. Uh -huh. so I wanted to apologize and to tell you what happened, and it's so simple and stupid that uh, you will laugh. Um, I lost my balance. My balance since the accident is not as good as it used to be. Um, and I fell over forward and I hit the edge of a wrought iron table with a half inch plate glass top, which shattered upon impact. So I was, that's why I was so grateful that the accident did not cause more damage. So I thank you for your concern, and I hope now that you know what a stupid accident it was, you will go <laughs> and get all about it. <laughs> and you know, I'm leaving you in her hands. So she's got to take care of herself. But in they have, good morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the one and only Trinity United Methodist Church here in LaGrangeville, New York, this 11th of June already. 2023. And it is also a Peace with Justice Sunday in the United Methodist Church. So if you feel a special calling to give a special offering during the offering time, please feel free to do so. But until then, we have time to worship. Heidi, that's it. please stand. now in our call to worship. Praise be to God who reigns above the heavens and in our hearts. Praise be to God who gives us light and healing in a dark world. Let us turn to Jesus for sight to see the depths of truth and positive action in all matters. All praise be to our God of love and light. Let our worship begin. Amen. And remain standing, please, as able as we sing for the healing of the nations, verses one through four, and you'll recognize the tune.
seated. Please be seated. You sound the whole choir of God's angels out there this morning. It's beautiful. Let us join now in our unison prayer. Holy God, we are grateful for this day as we experience the warm stirring of summer and the fullness of bountiful earth. We are grateful. We share the love of family and friends, friendships in this place. Praise be to you, O oh God, alone for all these gifts. Most of all, God, we praise you for the light, the hope, and healing offered to all through Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. And let us now join in the Apostles' Creed as found in 881 and on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the life, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now, in gratitude, knowing that Jesus will hear us, let us pray and confess what we need to, need to, to him. Let us pray quietly, please. Amen. And now hear these words of assurance. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son, Jesus. So whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thank you and amen. Amen. It is time now to hear our beautiful choir sing their beautiful anthem. Excuse me.
blending and the levels. It's beautiful, Heidi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, choir. <clears throat> You can stay there if you'd like. Okay, I'll wait for you. Carl, you look like you're ready for a cruise. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hold on now. I'll get, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Here you go. Here you go. You're welcome. You know what, mine, you can't read. I have so many notes all over it. <laughs> One more. There you go. Excellent. Excellent. And it is time for Grace. Grace Jar. Who would like to come up and start with our Grace Jar this morning? Grace Jar time. Okay. Stephanie. I have one for each of my children. One, Tabitha did her master's and graduated the middle of May, but more importantly, she is now in her first apartment. She got her keys yesterday. Wow. Her payment, not mine, so <laughs> <laughs> I say her first true apartment because it's not on me. <laughs> and Matthew is going to be starting. Please be with him because I'm not good with flying. Um, going for his commercial pilot's license. He begins schooling October 2nd. Wow, that's amazing. How old is Matthew? 24. Commercial license. Yeah. Wow. What will he be able to fly? I mean, that's Anything. everything. Anything. Wow. What a life he has ahead of him, God. Wow, high flying. Well, good morning. Good morning, church. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be here this morning. Oh, yes. God has raised us up this morning, yes. and we are thankful. Aren't we? Yes. 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 Amen. I'm not sure I'll be here Sunday, but if I'm here, it's okay. And I'll be leaving the other Sunday to go back home to St. Thomas. The Methodist Church is not um, my, I'm going to say my, I born there. My mother raised me there, so it's not a stranger to me. And I like it right here. Cool and quiet with all of us here. <laughs> you understand? Thank you, Pastor. I love my Pastor. I'm going to take all your things, you know? Thank you. And we all love right. you all the way to St. Thomas and back. Yes. All Stay best. in touch. Love you. Come to the Trinity Church. That's where I go to. Okay. So thank you all again for everything. It's Amen. been a pleasure having you with us again. Love you. Okay, now where's the cruise to, Carl? St. Thomas. St. Thomas. I'm grateful that the smoke cleared out. Yes. To the cemetery here at Father's Day. Oh, God bless you and your family. Now say something nice about your mom. Good morning. After her speech, I just need to add an extra dollar for that. <laughs> Thank God that she's here with me another Sunday. And my granddaughter turned four yesterday. Oh. And she went to American Dream in Jersey and it wasn't coming back home until about midnight. Oh. So I told her when she was going with her mom and my, my, my son that she will not make it to church this morning because I wanted to bring her to church. She woke me up at eight o'clock. I went down to tell her mom, get her ready, because she yeah. lived in the basement. Of the, so my, my, mom, my, her, my, my daughter said she was up at 6 o'clock, saying she got to get ready for church. Aww. By the time I'm ready to leave for church, she fell back asleep. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's always been my fear these past few years. <laughs> and I remember when I was first here, she was just a teeny tiny baby. And we had our service outdoors, and you were in great oh, despair because that little baby was having tummy problems. And now she's four years old. Uh, I hope maybe, well, I hope this, send me a picture of her if I don't see her again. Okay, thank, thank you. She's a sweetheart. Yes, Michelle, how are you? I'm good. Um, Wednesday, it's going to not sound like a gratitude one, but Wednesday is going to be 10 years. 
Mm. Since my mom left. Mm. And I don't know why, if it's that 10 year mark or whatever it is, it's been a difficult number of months. Um, it's just hitting me very hard this year. Um, but I am so grateful that I had such an amazing mother. Um, I know that not everyone does and not everyone has the relationship that I had with my mother. So I am just so grateful for that. And um, for those who don't, I hope that they find it because mm -hmm. it is like no other relationship. Truly, God bless you, Michelle, and all your memories, keep them strong. You have pictures of her in your house, some hope, What's that? you have pictures of her up? You have a photograph of her? Now? No, no, I, well, you could be, yeah, that'd be great, but I mean, I no, I mean, in your, house, in, in your house, in your house, in your house, in your home. Oh, gosh, yes. Good, yeah. okay. No, That's my important. mother was a gorgeous, beautiful woman, um, but she also passed away on Flag Day, oh. and I always thought 14? it was so apropos because my mother was the most patriotic person wow. I've ever known in my life. I mean, she really, really was. And I, I mean, it just, it always struck me as that was her day to go. Mm. Well, thank you, Michelle. Good morning, Karen. This is for my brother's visit. Um, and we don't, I mean, since he lives in Utah, we don't see each other too often, even though we are moving together. And uh, we're actually going down to Rono this week to kind of check some things out. So this is also in advance of prayers for safe travel mm -hmm. for us, both legs and him on his right arm. Great. Ronald, it's great to have you here this morning. So what happened after you fell now, Eileen? <laughs> I bled a lot. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I'm sure. <laughs> From this wound. Um, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here about family relations, which you just had two of. But uh, yesterday, Chris and I did something very unusual. He's been getting into ancestry and uh, looking up all of our ancestors. And he located the place where a number of our ancestors, going back to great, 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 great grandparents, are buried. So yesterday, we went down to Queens and went to four or five different cemeteries looking for graves and placing flowers on uh, the graves, or at least those who are for whom I was, to whom I was close, like my grandparents. Um, and we discovered two graves um, that were no longer marked, but we were able to get one of them marked. The cemetery personnel, after their hours, went out of their way to go into what was called the um, public field, which meant that those who didn't have enough money for big family plots could buy a single plot. It hadn't been mowed yet. So the grass was up to here. We went through the field three times trying to find, we found the right row, we couldn't find the grave because it wasn't a marked grave. And they were kind enough to come out, count it out, measure it out, tell us exactly where the grave was. So we were able to put a marker there and we found another grave that was also unmarked, but we knew it was precisely next to one other, so we knew where it was, so we're getting that one marked too. So just to thank God for um, family and the people who, without whom, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> I owe you a dollar. <laughs> one time I don't bring my pocketbook. There's an apple um, there. I just wanted to say how proud I am of our oldest daughter, Ashley. She's a school teacher up in the Marathon School District. And this past week, the school had their induction of the Honor Society. Mm. And every year, they choose one person to be an honorary member of the Honor Society. And Ashley was not aware of it. And one of her students got up and just read a beautiful thing about her. And she's just so loved at that school. And she was inducted as an honorary member of the Honor Society. Wow. Just so proud of her. So nice. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Good to see you this morning, too. Anybody else? Gianna, it, it's a satin doll. <laughs> Did I have a dollar this time? <laughs> Um, you know, I just wanted to be thankful for you, Darlene, oh. and, and this beautiful community that we kind of have all cultivated together, I guess, yeah. over the years. Um, and it's a community that has always been here for me, no mm. matter what. Um, it's Pride Month, and, you know, being gay in this world is not easy. It is hard. 
so many of you are here for me. You check in with me. I've been able to bring my partner here and many of you have, have met her and it's just such a beautiful place to be able to come back to in a world that isn't always um, kind to me. So thank you. We, we love you, Gianna. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, so many wonderful, wonderful comments this morning. So let's turn now to our time for our young. And I see today, Bryn and Anna. You want to come up, girls? I know Bryn does. Come on, Bryn. I have something to. Now, I debated back and forth whether I would have this this morning. And I'm going to head about that. You want to sit down here with me? Let me sit here. Do you think there's room for me? Okay, I like your shoes. Boy, they look comfortable. Do you put those on yourself? Yeah, I mean, there's little straps on her shoes and they flip over. You do that by yourself? That's really good. I'm, very, I'm impressed. Maybe I should try that. You think I just have slip-ons? Should I try shoes like that? That's a big girl shoe. Okay. What do you think I have in here, Bryn? What is this? Well, hold it. What do you think that is? Do you know what it, what it used to be? It was a container and who knows what might have been in it? Coffee. You know, I love my coffee. I love my coffee hour. So let's go to take the tape off. Just rip the tape off. Let me give you a help here. I'll start it for you. Let me start it down here and just pull it. I didn't want it to fall out of my car when I'm driving all around this morning. There we go. Okay. There you go. Okay. One piece. Another piece. Okay. There you go. Thank you. If you're good at it. I bet you're fun at Christmas and birthday time. <laughs> I would go. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my goodness, that's perfection. Thank you, sweetheart. There you go. Okay, now I will take care of that later. Take the lid off. Oh, what's that? What do you think? Okay, we'll put the lid here. What do we have in there? Let me pull it out. What is it? It's a shell, but is there something wrong with that shell? Does the shell usually, if you were on the beach walking with mommy and daddy, would you pick that shell up? Yeah. You would, okay. Now, how about this one? How about this one here? Is that a little better than this one? Yeah. What's, what's different about these two shells? They're a little different. They're a little different. I'll just hold them up for everybody to see here. Okay, here's one. This one looks pretty good. And this one has a hole in the side. See? And what's that? Hold it up so everybody can see it. What's, is that the same shell? It looks just like this, but it's broken. Yeah. And what's inside that? What's one more thing in there? Yeah, see, it's broken. Hold it up high. My goodness, you know what? When we look closely, we can see that that was a shell like this, and it was right here. See how the pieces come up in the middle? They spiral up. And you take another look at this shell. This shell is more complete. It's more like a whole shell. Mm -hmm. See, it's more like a whole shell. But then, which is the best of the four? Which one do you like the most? Or this one right here? Which one? If, you, if Mommy said, you can only take one back with you. Which one would you take back? This one? <gasps> or would you take this one? That one? So far, you like this one. What about this one? You like this one better? Which one do you like better? This one or this one? That one. She still likes that one. And this is a sh another shell. It's just not quite as much of the shell. You want to take that back? Or which one? Which one do you want to take back? That one. <laughs> What's different about this shell? Is it in pieces or is it a whole shell? It's a whole shell. It's a whole shell. Well, you know, we're like shells. Sometimes we feel like we, 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 we feel broken. We feel sick or we feel like we, some, it was just, we don't fit in. Maybe, you know, everybody's joining a sports team in school and we can't run. We don't know 
you know, we fall on our faces, we're not good with running, or we just don't feel complete like God made us. Well, what I want you to always remember, Bryn, is that God made you whole. You're beautiful, just like this shell. And I'm going to give you this shell. You want this shell? And I want you to remember how much God loves you, and you will always be whole, and God will always heal you, because you'll always be with Jesus, and you are one in him. That's very complicated, but it means you are whole and complete and beautiful in God's love. Okay? Love you, sweetheart. Hey, let's pray. Lord God, thank you for Bryn and all the children in the church and all their teachers. Lord, protect them. Keep them whole in your love. Keep their parents and grandparents and teachers strong. May they always be one in your love. Amen. Okay. Sweetheart. And if anybody wants a piece, you, you want a piece? Okay. Okay, thank you, sweetie. Anybody want a piece? Want to know Maybe how you might feel, but it's not. Which one? This one here? She loves it. Okay, anybody else want the pieces? You want the wall? There you go. I, I have a lot more, actually. If anybody would like a shell, please let me know. You know, I've been uh, packing up tons of stuff, and uh, I'm keeping most of it till I find a home for it, so. Okay, as I kids go off to Sunday school, wonderful. It's time for our scriptures now. We have special readers again today, thanks to the wonderful comments we heard from last week. Uh, I thank Heidi, I thank Carol, I thank Anne, I thank Frank and Kathy. You are all readers today. Please come forward at this time. The positions you are prepared to take. And we are hearing first our scriptures, <clears throat> just so you are aware. We're hearing uh, the, uh, the blind man who was healed with Jesus' touch and the uh, saliva in the, the dirt and in, in the clay. Then we're going to hear about the woman who was healed by touching Jesus. And then we're going to hear about how Paul was on his way to kill more Christians in Damascus, and he was struck down, but it was by the healing touch that he regained sight and his new life. So all this is going to tie together. I will take a back seat here, and Heidi, please begin. Walking down the street with his disciples, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. Telling them that he had to do the work God sent him to do, Jesus added, as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the world's light. Jesus went to the blind man, spit in the dust, made a clay paste with the saliva, rubbed the paste on the blind man's eyes and said, go wash at the pool of Siloam. The man went and washed, and his eyes were open. He could see. Soon the town was buzzing. His relatives and those who knew him as a begging blind man wondered if it could be him. They were saying, isn't this the man we knew who sat here and begged? Others said, it's him all right. But others objected, oh, it's not the same man at all. It just looks like him. The blind man replied, saying, it's me, the very one. They asked, how did your eyes get opened? A man named Jesus made a paste and rubbed it on my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. I did what he said. When I washed, I saw. They marched the man to the Pharisees because the day Jesus made the paste and healed his blindness was the Sabbath. The Pharisees grilled the man on how he could now see. And he said, he put a clay paste on my eyes and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, obviously this man can't be from God. He doesn't keep the Sabbath. Others countered, how can a bad man do miraculous God revealing things like this? There was a split in their ranks. They came back at the blind man. You're the expert. He opened your eyes. What do you say about him? And the healed man said, he is a prophet. The Pharisees kept arguing with the healed man who then irritated them with his questions back at them. Then they screamed, you're nothing but dirt. How dare you take that tone with us? And they threw him out in the street. Jesus heard that the man had been thrown out and went out and found him. He asked him, do you believe in the son of God? The man said, 
point him out to me so that I can believe in him. Jesus said, you're looking right at him. Don't you recognize my voice? Lord, I believe, the man said, and worshipped him. Jesus then said, I came into the world so that those who have never seen will see, and those whose eyes are open will see and understand, because their minds will also be open. Jesus was touched by a sick woman. In the crowd that day, there was a woman who for 12 years had been afflicted with hemorrhages. She spent every penny she had on the doctors, but no one had been able to help her. She slipped in from behind the crowd and touched the edge of Jesus' robe. At that very moment, her hemorrhaging stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? When no one stepped forward, Peter said, but Lord, we've got crowds of people all around us. Dozens have touched you. Jesus insisted, somebody touched me. I felt the power discharging from me. When the woman realized she couldn't remain hidden, she knelt trembling before Jesus. In front of all the people, she blurted out her story, why she touched him, and how at that same moment she was healed. Jesus said, daughter, you took a risk trusting that I could help you. Your faith has made you well. You are healed and whole. Live well, live blessed. After the stoning of Stephen, Saul continued to breathe down the necks of Jesus' disciples. He was out to kill them. He went to the chief priest and got arrest warrants to take to the meeting places in Damascus so that if he found any followers of Jesus, whether men or women, he could arrest them and bring them to Jerusalem. Saul set off. When he got to the outskirts of Damascus, he was suddenly dazed by a blinding flash of light. As he fell to the ground, he heard a voice. Saul, Saul, why are you out to get me? He said, who, who are you? I am Jesus, the one you're hunting down. I want you to get up and enter the city. In the city, You'll be told what to do next. Saul's companions stood there dumbstruck. They could hear the sound, but couldn't see anyone. While Saul, picking himself up off the ground, found himself stone blind. They had to take him by the hand and lead him into Damascus. Saul remained blind for three days. He ate nothing and he drank nothing. There was a disciple in Damascus by the name of Ananias. Jesus spoke to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, Ananias answered. Ananias, get up and go over to Straight Avenue. Ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus. His name is Saul. He's there praying. He has just had a dream in which he saw a man named Ananias enter the house and lay hands on him so he could see again. Ananias protested and said, Lord, you can't be serious. Everybody's talking about this man and the terrible things he's been doing. His reign of terror against your people in Jerusalem. And now he's shown up here with papers from the chief priest that give him license to do the same to us. But Jesus said, Don't argue. Go. I have picked Saul as my personal representative to Jews and to non-Jews. And now I am about to show him what he's in for, the hard work and suffering that goes with what I am calling him to do. So Ananias went and found the house 
placed his hands on blind Saul and said, Brother Saul, Jesus sent me here, the same Jesus you saw on your way here. He sent me so you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. He could see again. He got to his feet, was baptized, and sat down with them to a hearty meal. Saul spent a few days getting acquainted with the Damascus disciples, but wasting no time began preaching in the meeting places, saying that Jesus was the Son of God. They were caught off guard by this change in Saul and kept asking, isn't this the man who wreaked havoc in Jerusalem among the believers? And didn't he come here to do the same thing? Arrest us and drag us to jail for sentencing? Even while the disciples still feared and distrusted Saul, his strong momentum grew and he focused straight at the doubters. When he tried to show the Damascus Jews that Jesus was the Messiah, he really threw them off and they were very confused and upset. After this had gone on a long time, some Jews were so fed up with Saul that they conspired to kill him. But some disciples were watching out for Saul and they helped him escape during the night by lowering him down to the ground in a basket. Back in Jerusalem, Saul tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him. They didn't trust Saul one bit until the disciple Barnabas stood up for him and introduced Saul to the apostles. He told them how Saul had truly seen and spoken to Jesus on the Damascus road and how Paul there laid his life on the line by boldly preaching in Jesus's name. After that, Saul was accepted as one of them. With no questions asked, he preached about Jesus without hesitation, but he ended up in a running argument with some Jewish leaders. It got so tense that the disciples secretly got Saul back to his hometown until things calmed down. All over the country, Judea, Samaria, Galilee, the church grew, the people deeply worshiped God and the Holy Spirit was with them, strengthening them to live as Jesus had taught. Thanks be to God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. thank you so so very much you've been a great help with this as we move forward through how paul was used by god to touch our hearts let's stand now as able and prepare ourselves for the light of the world and let us sing christ is the world's light page 188 verses one through four and projected standing as you're able please <clears throat>
Oh, man, please be seated. Please be seated. Join me in prayer. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for this word of light and hope. Lord, may the words I share now with your people fill them with the same light and feel the touch of Jesus this day and every day. Amen. It was an interesting when I was preparing this week for this the message, um, and I always been fascinated by the drama of Paul being struck by the light and being blinded, and then his whole life changed. But one thing in my reading that never jumped out until this time was how Ananias, when he was called to to come to Paul, he touched him, laid hands on him. And all of a sudden, I had almost like the bolt of light Paul had. I felt zap, zap. I remembered these two readings that our volunteers did today. First, the blind man who had never had sight, who was healed when Jesus stopped and saying he was the light of the world, went to him and, and, and spit, spittle into the, uh, the clay soil, made a mix of it, and then put it on his eyes. And he could see after he went to the pool of Siloam and and washed. That was an amazing thing. God, Jesus went through this, this whole practice and told him what to do, and he could see. And then the story goes on how they, the people didn't believe him, some believed him, some didn't believe him, and it was a big, big, uh, big ruckus because this happened on the Sabbath, and the Pharisees just blew up over this, and they were just very angry. But the man knew who Jesus was. He was able to see and understand. By the time all this was over, Jesus had healed him. And then the second, the second story is a reverse, but again, touches involved. And the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years was in despair. And I, I heard a tidbit recently, uh, the, the, prophet, uh, the uh, historian Josephus uh, from those days uh, actually wrote that this woman had tried to be healed by the Pharisees and the healers of the Jewish tradition, and they failed. So she knew from them there was no hope. So she had heard of Jesus and she went to him in this crowd of people, now you, the touching him is very culturally, very, very, she was supposed to be separated, but she managed to get close and she touched the hem of his garment and he stopped. Who touched me? He felt, it's like when I'm here with you, I feel you. There's something that comes off of you. That's why I'd rather be near you than standing up here. There is something, you know, Jesus felt that. And, and he said, who touched me? And they, the disciples said, oh Lord, you know, there are people all around you. And he said, someone touched me. I felt the power. I felt it discharged, the energy. Leave me. And the woman hearing this knew she was, she felt, she knew she was healed, just like that. She went, knelt, and confessed why she had, what she had done and why she did it. And Jesus looked at her, knowing the risk she'd taken, and said, what a risk you've taken. But your faith has made you well. Your faith. And with that, I had this picture in my mind of her faith was so strong and she was so desperate that, and Jesus' power, healing power was so strong, it's almost like magnets drawing together. And this was just the overwhelming power of God working through Jesus to heal this woman. I'm like, wow, this is, we, we often, we don't, I don't think we ever give enough credit to God's power and the energy. Remember, we're still talking, thinking Pentecost, Holy Spirit. When the spirit came, the rush of the wind, the flames dancing like over the, the disciples' heads, then they could speak and they couldn't shut up. They had so much energy. They couldn't stop talking about God and Jesus and that he was resurrected and there was hope and it was a whole new ball game for them. Just like it was for these people who Jesus had healed. So going further, let's, let's look a little more at the pictures of, uh, let's see the first, the first picture I have, three uh, paintings I found today I'd like to look at. This one is by uh, Morelli, uh, Dominic Morelli, uh, 1876. It's actually pretty recent, not well, kind of sort of more than the others. Uh, this is the best one I found because here you see him, you see the, the light coming down, you see the people in the background, and he is, there's Saul, he's flat on the ground, he'd been knocked down this light, whatever it was, and his eyes, if you could see a little closer, his eyes are shut, and he's like, he's desperate, he's like holding his head up, he's listening. Remember, who is he listening to? There is a voice we heard. Like, you don't know where that voice came from today, did you? You never know when that voice is going to come out and speak to you. Well, 
That was Jesus saying, why are you persecuted me? Why are you opposed to me? Why are you, you know, why are you after me, Saul? And Saul says, who are you? And then he says, I'm Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus who had died? And this was the, the man, Jesus was the person he was trying to eradicate, to snuff out by killing the people who were following, the disciples who couldn't shut up anymore. He wanted to stump them all out. And here's the cause of all this. This is Jesus talking to him as he's lying on the ground, blinded. And Jesus speaks to him. Go on to Damascus, go on to the city, and you will find out what you're going to do. Well, he was kind of helpless at that point. He, he tried to get up, and he was blind. He couldn't walk. He had to depend on the, the people with him to take him, you know, arm by arm, take him to Damascus. And he had been told where to go. They found the place to go, what God had said, and they waited. And for three days, he didn't eat. He didn't drink. So what do you think he did? I mean, we don't know this. It wasn't written, but if you are suddenly blind, you can't, you're, you're totally lost. And, you know, you've heard, it's just you're in just like a state of shock. You might start talking to yourself, maybe even God. Remember, he was a devout Jew. He was so, he was raised as a very devout Jew. He dotted every I, he did everything right. And he wasn't going to let this name of Jesus come and start taking away the, the power of Moses. He wasn't going to tolerate that. That's what he was after. He wanted the, the, the Christian dead. So now he's talking to himself. And remember, what else just happened last Sunday? We talked about he was in the back row. We could see the picture approving of the stoning of Stephen. Remember young Stephen? And Stephen, who was being stoned to death, calls out, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Saul witnessed that, and all this must be going through his head. Well, this man that we just stoned, that was stoned and killed because of my directions, he wanted, to be, he wanted me to be forgiven. And now what? He, Saul must have been in real turmoil, but he knew Jesus. Jesus had spoken to him. Well, at the same time, um, Artemis, uh, a follower of Jesus, was in the, in the city, and he has a vision of Jesus. And, and he hears the words, what he's supposed to do is go to this place. He gives him the address. And he says, you go here and you will find Saul. Uh, he, needs, he needs you to go and I want you to uh, touch him. I want you to, to heal. I want you to just take care of this. I want you to go. And, and Artemis says, I can't, you know, oh my gosh, she's awful. He's a killer. I, you know, he, he get all afraid. And he said, no, 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 you're going to go. Go, just get him and go. So Artemis didn't want to, but he did what the voice of Jesus told him. Up he went. He went into the house. He found him, found, found Saul. He put his hands on him. Again, the touch. And he healed him. And in that moment, God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, came into Saul. And he was able to know what God was calling him to do. And as he prayed, as he blessed him, as he touched him, the scales fell off his eyes, and he could see. And what was his proclamation? What did he know without a doubt? Jesus was alive. Jesus was Lord. Jesus was the Son of God, and he had to tell everybody. Whew, talk about a turnaround in your life. And this is true. I mean, this, I, it, honest to God, on the Bible, you know, this, this really happened. I really believe this. And what did they do? I love the way this, that line ended. He got up, he was baptized, you know, asking for forgiveness of sins, following Jesus now, and they had a hearty meal. I love that, don't you, to end something with a hearty meal? Not they weren't Methodists, you know, back in those days, denominations <laughs> hadn't started yet, but they all, the idea of a meal, the, the meal at the table, and to carry that, the communion of feasting together in fellowship, very, very important Christian concept. So then we know that, that Paul, uh, Saul, he doesn't get called Paul. We'll talk about Paul next week. Here's the picture where he is healed by Ananias. You can imagine how Ananias feared this, but then all of a sudden he, he was uh, uh, present at this, at this happening. And the third picture, please. And there he is. Paul goes on to, to preach wherever he, he is, and this is one of the places. He could end up in a prison many times in a prison. He's going to be flogged. He's going to be beaten. He's going to have a lot of things happen to him. 
because he will not stop talking about Jesus. He got, just like the others, they couldn't shut him up. And he was so empowered. Uh, he went on with the, the disciples. They went, they expanded to the known world and he went on three journeys. Again, we'll talk more about that next week. But the idea here is this man was totally turned around because God had a plan for his life. He had a purpose and it wasn't to kill people. His purpose was to go to the Gentiles and all the Jewish peoples and also the word in, it includes kings to let them know that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is alive. The resurrection is real. There is hope. And Paul, Saul Paul, had connections in Rome. He had connections. He was knowledgeable. He made these things happen. But not only that, when he was out, I mean, he was almost killed a number of times. A, a, a viper had stung him. It could have killed him. There was an amazing power and healing over, over Saul. So when we think back to the, the touch, how God uses touch and healing, and we think back to that shell, the broken shell, how many times do we feel broken? How many times do we feel blind? We don't know what we're supposed to do. We don't know what we're supposed to see. We don't know what we're supposed to hear or listen to. We just don't feel whole. We need God. Remember the touch of God can heal, can open our eyes, can turn our lives around to live the purpose we have. You're never too young. You're never too old to hear this. God's touch is real. Whenever you feel that need, remember that shell. Remember, you are the whole shell in God's hands. Be open to his touch. He's still touching us today, you and me and everyone in this world. Now, with that touch in our hearts, let's stand and sing, He Touched Me. He Touched Me. bless you all. Please be seated. Please be seated. Let us turn now to our time of prayers. Uh, we have um, uh, Gail. Gail, are you online today? Were you able? She's not on. Okay. Uh, I, I spoke with Gail yesterday. Uh, she's had another uh, bout. Uh, she's seen more doctors. She's not up to par, that's for sure yet. Uh, she still exhausts very easily. Uh, so she has a round of doctors she's going to be seeing soon. Uh, so please keep her in your prayers uh, for strength. Um, we have people, we have several people traveling now. Of course, it's June, it's like graduations, weddings, and all kinds of things. We, we pray for their, uh, their safety, and we're praying, of course, for, for Karen and Ronald as you uh, go off on your adventure for, and safe, safe returns also, and then your flight, Ronald. Um, are there other prayers we'd like to need to lift up? But Carl's family also will continue to hold you in prayer. Any prayers, additional prayers? Yes. 
prayers for my brother <clears throat> Freeman. He went in for back surgery. Freeman? Freeman. Yeah. A few weeks ago, and after the back surgery, he had a stroke. Oh, he's Lord. Paralyzed on his whole left side. Oh. But um, he's in now in Northern Dutchess Hospital and um, doing extensive physical therapy yeah. for the next six to eight weeks. And there's hope, you know? Yeah, absolutely. there's always hope, and there's yeah. that touch of Jesus. Did, um, I'm just curious. Um, how did the back surgery do that turn out? The back surgery went well. Good. All right. Okay. So that's the purpose of that all. Anyone else? Let us pray. I, I pray. Oh. I I'm pray sorry. for my, I call her my mom, my mom's best friend, Auntie Mavis. She traveled to the island of St. Kitts. Her son passed away. Oh, yeah. um, and she had knee surgery. So she was by the grace of God, she was just able to, the doctor gave her permission to go. And my daughter's father passed away, and my daughter is emotionally roller coaster right mm. now. So keep her in your prayers. Her name is Heather, also like me, but she we call her Precious. Heather? Yeah, Heather that. Jr., but we call her Precious. <laughs> and my Aunt Mavis. Oh, your family. You have many things going on in your family. Anyone else? Let us pray. Oh, loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this beautiful weather that we are now enjoying, and we thank you for the fact that we had this church where we could come and, and fellowship and love and, and just spend such time of joy and, and hope with you this day. Lord, continue to fill us so that we might take this joy that we have received, that we feel, and this amazing, miraculous touch out to share with other people. Lord, we thank you for, we thank you for our first responders, Lord. We've, Thank you, Lord, for all men and women who stand in the gap for peace in the military. We thank you, Lord, for all teachers and parents and grandparents and all the, the people who take care of the children. Lord, guide them, keep them safe in these challenging days. Lord, we thank you for all medical professionals. We thank you for all those who are helping those who have special needs. We thank you, Lord, for doctors and nurses and medical professionals for mental, emotional problems, physical problems, Lord, with so many people becoming ill. Lord, where there's loss of grief, we ask, Lord, that you fill people's hearts with wonderful memories and strength. Lord, we ask that you be with all our governmental leaders. We ask for respect for all people, and we ask, Lord, for your truth to shine forth. Lord, we pray for the starvation in Africa, the tension in the Middle East. We pray, Lord, for the fentanyl crisis and all the drug problems that, that that so face our, our young. Lord, we pray, for, we pray for the leadership of the church, Lord, as it is about to make mighty changes around the conference and around the globe. Lord, be with all pastors, all people, all churches, as it is so important, Lord, we know for your light to continue to shine. Lord, we continue to pray for Carl's family. We pray for Gail. We pray for Karen and Ronald as they travel forth. We travel for, we ask for Freeman's healing from his stroke. We ask for Heather's family. So many, Lord, need your touch and your care. And now, as Jesus taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we are going to hear a special duet. This is going to be a duet from Heidi and Gianna Pucci. And it's pronounced P-A-Y-S-U.
That was one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. Mother and daughter, and what? A, oh my gosh! Did you? Did your heart pound? Did you feel chills? Oh, I can't even talk now. It's amazing when I lose my. Well, I can lose my voice, but not have. I mean, I mean, you just have me stuttering here. This is tremendous. Thank, what a gift! God bless you. And now it is time to return our, our gifts to God, as He has so blessed us. I catch my breath. Oh, loving God, use these gifts to create miracles, to open eyes and to heal those in need. In Jesus' name we ask this, amen. amen. Okay. Please be seated. A quick question for you, Heidi. You're not gonna go join the satin dolls, are you? Nope. <laughs> oh, no. 
You want room for a fourth? We don't want, we won't let you go. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was beautiful. Uh, it is time for our mission moment. Um, uh, oh yeah, all right, let's look at this first. Uh, you, you need to know, I, want, I don't want anybody to say, they said, well, where is she? Uh, my farewell Sunday will be next Sunday. Um, I know many people are away. You know, I, I'm just, this is the way that works out time wise, and I will be just so glad for whoever's here uh, because I do have to go into official retirement. Uh, my last days in the office will be this uh, Wednesday and the following Wednesday after that 18th, the 14th and the 21st. 21st also happens to be my 48th anniversary, but I told my son, I got to be in church first. <laughs> so William understands. Uh, three to five. Uh, if you need to see me for any need at all, and there's some last minute requests I've been taking care of, uh, please do that. And I'll definitely meet there another time, uh, but I will be in the office at that point. Uh, Thursday, the 22nd will be my last day officially. Then I have vacation time uh, serving both Trinity and Wikipedia. And please, uh, beginning of June 23rd, in, with any pastoral concern or emergency, don't hurt yourself again. <laughs> Pastor Eileen, take care of yourself. Keep your eye on this one. Uh, please contact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, good. I'm, I'm leaving you in good hands, Eileen. Uh, the scholarship information we know has been up there. Thank you, Joyce and Marianne, for that. Uh, youth News, uh, please uh, connect with Clay for information. The Food Pantry, I know you're all in good hands with that. They're very organized. And with anything else? Okay. Um, Yeah, good. we need the mic. What we really need for a vacation Bible school is kids signed up. Okay, get the word out. Get the word out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I will um, pass the word along to the uh, co-op because they know about it, but I will remind them. And I know Clay, the woman from, uh, the pastor from uh, Pleasant Valley uh, wasn't, you did, so you got in touch with her. So hopefully that might have something might happen. Yeah, we, you will, they'll just appear, they'll appear. <laughs> and here we have, we have all the kits, the asylum kits, the health kits that Patsy took down to go Patsy. She is down now in, she, are they just almost done? Patsy just texted me, she's home. She oh, came, thank you, Lord. She came, she made it home safely. She wasn't feeling well this morning, so oh, she left early. She left early, good. But this is a picture of the kits mm -hmm. that she took down to Long Island for the conference. Yeah. But there were a lot of other items because we had a lot of the uh, asylum kits that were for men only. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, several men that are uh, staying at the Red Roof Inn mm -hmm. on Route 9 in Poughkeepsie. So we've taken the men only kits there and there were, I think Marsha gave us a box of uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, soaps, and we brought those there last Excellent. week. So they were grateful to get all of that. So all of this stuff that we're donating, is going to a worthy cause. And this is, this is the, the women's and the children's items that went down to conference. And it was quite a lot. And Patsy went down by herself and she, was she yes, she feeling up, she, I'm glad she's home. I'm yes. glad to know that. <laughs> yeah, um, no, that, that's quite a, as, as we prayed for her last week, this week, thank her when she comes back next Sunday. Uh, it's quite an ordeal to go to annual conferences, Eileen and I both know, um, and we, we thank her for her representing us there. Um, are there any other announcements you need to share at this time? Then hear this benediction. No matter how you feel, broken, whole, in pieces, crushed, you are one in Jesus' eyes. Remember, his touch is always upon you. His healing, loving touch of light is always on you. Go with that promise in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
wait till Carol leaves. She's taking the light of Christ out into the world. And then I hope to see you all over for coffee. You saw my big coffee container. God bless you all.